I'm Matt Dixon, and welcome to the Purple Patch Podcast. The mission of Purple Patch is to empower and educate every human being to reach their athletic potential. Through the lens of athletic potential, you reach your human potential. The purpose of this podcast is to help time-starved people everywhere integrate sport into life. Today we're talking to Purple Patch athlete Mike Kane. It's an inspirational story about how the transformation of performance occurred, not through chasing fitness, but instead first creating a robust platform of health. And from there, he yielded a great return on investment for all of the effort that he put in. It wasn't about doing more. It wasn't about committing or being tougher. He was already committed. It was about him finding his performance recipe. One of the key tools that we leverage at Purple Patch to help create precision around our pursuit of health is Inside Tracker. By taking a look inside and assessing your biometrics and then combining it with the results and action plan from the team of scientists at Inside Tracker, we can filter out distractions and ensure that you're focusing on the right elements to yield performance readiness on a day to day basis. Whether you're chasing world class performance in athletics or you're simply chasing the kids around the house. And you can leverage Inside Tracker as well. You don't need to be a purple patch athlete. All you need to do is head to insidetracker.com slash purple patch. That's insidetracker.com slash purple patch. And here's a sneaky code for you Purple Patch Pro 20. That's Purple Patch Pro 20 you get 20% off everything at the store. I recommend it. And of course, if you want to amplify your efforts and make sure you're getting really, really good traction, feel free to reach out to Purple Patch Info at purplepatchfitness.com. We can always set up a consultation with you to go through the results and ensure that you're getting things put into action. All right, enjoy the show. And welcome to the Purple Patch Podcast. As ever, your host, Matt Dixon. And today, we're talking about performance, high performance. But we're not talking about podiums or victories. We're going to have a conversation with Purple Patch athlete, Mike Kane. Now, I've coached Mike for a couple of years now, and he is a chief manufacturing officer at an organization called Framebridge. It's a framing company based out of New Jersey. And he's been coached by me, but I will say the first year or so, we had, as a partnership, challenges, struggles. We couldn't crack the code. But suddenly, there was a shift, a transformation that occurred. And it was initiated by a shift in perspective. Rather than chasing fitness, Mike decided, on my encouragement, to chase health. And by creating a platform of health, boom, boom. The results were dramatic. He experienced a huge improvement in his body composition, his daily energy, his return on investment from his training efforts, improving his fitness, and a sense of control. It wasn't about just getting tougher, doing more. Instead, what it was about was actually shifting how he was eating. Some of the composition of those meals, his hydration, his sleep, organization over the course of every week and the effort that he was already been putting in suddenly magnified he got the results now mike is the epitome of a time-starved athlete he's a senior executive he travels a ton and at the same time he's trying to integrate sport into life competing in things like marathons and ironman events but now he's on a platform where he can have greatly more success And so you're going to find his story both inspirational, but also a treasure trove of lessons of your own journey. Set the right perspective, get the mindset correct, ensure that you're integrating habits. And not only are you going to get faster, but you're also going to improve your health and also how you show up in life. And that, for me, is the epitome of what it means to be a Purple Patch athlete. I think you're going to enjoy the show, but before we get cracking, why don't we do Matt's Newsings? Yes, Barry, it is indeed Matt's Newsings. Let me ask you a question. Are you working really hard? Are you committed? Are you chasing your goals? Great. I love that. It's really valuable. In fact, I think every human being should take on a challenge, should chase success, 
And it's fantastic. You should be chasing stuff. And you have 168 hours in every single week. And our mission at Purple Patch is to ensure that you're doing the right things to maximize your effectiveness of those hours. You, you're the one that owns the journey. You invest the time, you commit. You put in the right amount of hours relative to the competing demands that you have in life. Us, we're your guide. We help you optimize, create the right focus, make the smart decisions. It's a partnership. And out of it, you achieve in both sport and life. We're just your guide to help you optimize the journey. And the journey is also more fun because you're committing and going on a journey with a whole group of like-minded and supportive folk that are in similar situations as you, taking on their own similar journey to yours. And for me, this is what it means to be coached. This is what it means to be a part of Purple Patch. And we'd love to have you join us. It's three simple steps. Number one, reach out to info at purplepatchfitness.com. Have a free call with us. See if we're a good fit for your journey. Number two, get in the right program for you. We're going to help you make that decision. And within a day or so, we can have you dialed in and on plan. You can be optimizing your performance within 24 to 48 hours. And step three, if you don't like it, we're so strong in our belief that you will. But if you don't, we'll give you money back. If you feel like the program isn't right for you after the first 30 days, hey, it's risk free. We'll give you your money back and you can go back to your own merry way. Feel free to reach out to us for step one, info at purplepatchfitness.com. And with that, guys, we're going to make sure you get dialed in. If you reach out to the team, tell them that you listen to me on the podcast. They're going to take extra special care of you. With that, Barry, I want to do a bit more education this week. Let's do Word of the Week. We like the way he thinks, serious with the way. Let's open the book. It's time to take a peek. It's the day. Yes, folks, the word of the week this week, well, let's carry on the flow a little bit. It is the number 168, 168. Look, I'm busy. You're busy. We all are. We all must manage huge competing demands from work, from family, from life. And into those demands, I'm the guy asking you to consistently integrate fitness and exercise and all of the other supporting habits that we talk about on this show. Can you really fit it all in? Yes, is the answer. In fact, by you taking on a four to 12 hour commitment each week, that's a pretty broad range, but it really depends on your goal. Four to 12 hours. With that commitment of four to 12 hours, the promise is that with the remaining 156 to 164 hours that you have in every single week, they are going to be greatly more effective and productive. And for me, that is a hugely positive return on your investment. And so, simply put, stop viewing your fitness and your performance habits as a luxury or a nice addition if you have time. Instead, invest in yourself. It is the best way for you to optimize the 168 hours that you have every single week to achieve. That is you being a performance human. And that is why 168 is our word of the week. And with that, let's introduce Mike Kane. He's one of my favorites. It's a great story. You're going to love it. It is time for the meat and potatoes. All right, yes, folks, it is the meat and potatoes. And this is a conversation that I've been excited to have for many weeks now. I have the honor and the privilege of introducing one of the most bitter disappointments in the whole Purple Patch family, (laughs) Mike Kane. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Matt. We're excited for the conversation, joking aside. And uh, we've been working with each other for for quite some time now, and and I really appreciate you giving me uh, time on this show to share your story, which uh, which I think listeners are gonna are gonna a really enjoy, but also get a, a tremendous amount of lessons in, around performance in life, let alone sport. And so, uh, 
So if you're locked and loaded and you've got your seatbelt on, shall we, uh, shall we get, get going with this thing? <laughs> Ready to go, yes. All right, you're in the hot seat, genuinely. So uh, <laughs> as we like to say, don't F it up, yeah? <laughs> so, I'll do um, my best. <laughs> so as we, um, as, as I always like to do, just um, I want to dig back into sort of heritage and, and family growing up. So just tell the audience where, where you sort of grew up, what your family was like growing up, and, uh, and, and maybe start from there and we'll, we'll dig into the weeds a little bit. Yeah, I, I was born in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, and I, I spent uh, all of my time growing up there until I went to college. I lived in West Hartford um, for the most part. I have a brother, two sisters, um, and and parents, of course. And um, it, it was uh, it was close knit family. My my relatives all lived in that same general area, so it revolved around family, sport, and then the two combined over time. It's fantastic. And now you're in Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, my wife and I have moved quite a bit for work. Uh, this is our ninth home um, in, in Lexington. We, we love it here, though. F- fantastic. And then uh, wh- why don't you just explain your role, your company and organization, Framebridge, yeah, but wh- why don't you organize, give us insight into your role that you do? Very busy life. Yeah, Framebridge, uh, we're an omni-channel retailer, so we have Brick and mortar retail stores. That's the fastest growing part of our business based in Washington, D.C. I'm the chief manufacturing officer, so I'm responsible for the operations and supply chain. Um, our major factories are in Kentucky, New Jersey, and uh, Mexico right now. So, oh, wow. So I spend a, a good deal of my time on airplanes uh, going between those facilities. Um, it's a fantastic company, and I love what I do. It's and a lot of listeners, without perhaps even realizing it, will probably have some of your products hanging on their walls and, and elsewhere. Yeah, so it's it's one of those. And you you go through these tornadoes of time coming up to Valentine's Day, coming up to Thanksgiving, whatever else, coming up to all of the holidays. It gets very busy for you guys. Yeah, it it does. Um, our, our, we we call it how many how many peaks has somebody gone through as, as they live through our holiday season with us, but. Uh, it's a very exciting time, and uh, very proud of the team. They, you know, the, the peak season for us, we hire hundreds of people, but it's like another day in our factories. That means our team has done a fabulous job. It was fantastic. And and how about growing up? You mentioned sports a little bit, and and I'm always intrigued because you're ostensibly, I mean, you're you're running the Boston Marathon in a couple of weeks' time, but but extensively, you're you're a triathlete and you you do multi sports. So go back to sort of high school age what what were you, what did you do sports when you were young were you what type of sports did you do yeah i did i did organized sports from the time i i was very young i i played football baseball um i boxed i played golf um uh, and i did that i i actually played football boxed and and played golf through college so sports has always been a, a really important part of my life and um triathlon was the next step for me yeah, how, how did you how did you stumble into that? Because that's quite a divergence from. Uh, I <laughs> yeah. mean, some some of the open water swims are, are aligned to sort of boxing, but you wouldn't necessarily <laughs> put the two sports together. So, what, what led you into yeah. to the crazy sport? I, it, I was it, it was at a time when triathlon was really just coming into its own, and I had met a, a friend, um, or I made a friend from work, and he was doing Olympic and sprint distance triathlons and he, he just said you should try it and I did and um, the the first one like for many I think the first one was pretty rough but uh, after that I, I fell in love with it and I, I raced as much as I possibly could um, so that, that's how I got involved and I've never looked back I love to race. It's fantastic and your your just to, just to ground everyone so CMO, not Chief Marketing Officer, Manufacturing Officer. So you a lot of operations, very busy. You also have, we work together, so you also have extensive travel, international and, um, and of course, uh, domestic. Uh, it, so the epitome of a time-starved athlete. And you are integrating sport into that very busy life. And so the puzzle that we're trying to work on together is to unlock readiness to go and compete at half Ironman and Ironman distance races, as I said, Boston coming up and lots of fun, different stuff like that, while also, of course, showing up in life. So so right from the start, what we've been looking to unlock is 
sort of as many listeners know, but both sporting performance and improving health and improving the way that you show up in life. Is, is that a fair enough perspective through your lens? That's my lens, but through your lens of the importance of the sport as it, as it fits into your life? Yeah, I, th- I think that's definitely how the sport fits into my life. And, and I think the, the work that we've had together, I think, is most successful. It's coming into being the most successful part of, of integrating sport and, and life together. I think we're, we're really onto something now. We are now. Uh, it, it took us a little while. And, and that's, why, <laughs> that's why I wanted to invite you onto the show. Because if you go back over the last year, 18 months, and, and I think it's best coming from you, not not from the coach, but from the athlete, you've had some real challenges, both in the sporting results side of things that I think uh, from as a coach's lens have dovetailed into the life performance energy and everything else. So if you had to sort of pause and reflect, let's go pre-Thanksgiving of last year backwards over the last year or so, how would you highlight some of the more negative experiences you're going through, some of the, the challenges. Can you give listeners a little bit of insight into some of the, what, what the world looked like for Mike over that last year or so? Yeah, when, when we started working together, and I, I think from all the time I had done triathlons or endurance sports, for me, it had always been chase fitness. It was, if, if you do more, it's better. Um, never miss a workout. If you miss a workout, you got to stack it on another workout. And, and that's, those are some pretty busy days. And, and for me, they were not productive, and, and some of the setbacks that I had during that time, I, I didn't finish a number of races, and that, that's something that hadn't happened before, and um, that, that was certainly negative experience of, that, that I owned of not finishing races because of how I was pursuing things, and there were some injuries as well along the way that, that kind of laid me up from the ability to run for several months, so uh, I, I think the most in, important part of this is the the shift in focus away not not away from fitness i feel like i'm more fit today than i was six months ago a year ago two years ago but i'm chasing health a lot more than i'm chasing fitness these days well we're going to come to that i want to i want to hover on the negativity for a little bit because there, okay. there were there, there were two from the coach's lens now and um that there, there were a few observations that I had had over the course of, of last year. Two, two key moments. The first, which was very early last year or, or even maybe late the year following, was you going to a race and, and not even starting uh, because there was the, the collision of so much work stacked on top of it that you basically weren't sleeping. You were just exhausted and pulled the pin before. And that, that was sort of that, that organizational side of stuff that, that was a challenge. But the one that that was the the I don't want to call it rock bottom because it over dramatizes it and et cetera et cetera. But the one moment for me that was fundamentally key from a coaching standpoint was Ironman Florida last year, where it's a two loop swim, and I remember tracking you very early in the morning. You go around the first loop of the swim, well ahead of swimming is not your strength naturally, like relative. But you went around the first loop. You were well inside of sort of any cutoff. You were well on pace. And then you didn't finish the swim. And you, you called me afterwards. And I hope you don't mind me sharing this. But you said, that wasn't physical. That was just, I couldn't will myself on the second thing. Is that, is that, does, is that your recollection there? It's like, really, yeah. we, we need to shift something. Yeah, that was, um, <clears throat> that, that was a low point, I think. And that, that's exactly what the conversation was. I, I think that there was a collision of um, really wanting to race and do good things on a race course and, and work and personal life. And it, it, that was the low point. That, that was the collision where something had to change. Yeah. And, um, and change it did because, uh, and, and I know the date randomly because I, I was looking at the document uh, just the other day in preparation for this conversation. So it was November the 21st and November the 22nd. And what I asked you to do was to outline a day in the life, just choose two random days. Um, I think it was a Friday and a Saturday for you, but uh, by memory. But I said, I would just want you to write down, you know, when you wake up, what you do when you first wake up, whether it's coffee, water, whatever it is, 
when you go and exercise or train, when, you ha- when you're consuming food, what your meetings are like, just on a broad level. And, um, and you wrote it down. And, uh, and I'm, I'm just going to summarize this a little bit. Now, you're probably going to cover, cover your eyes and, uh, and, and wilt a little bit when I do this. But, uh, but I think it's important for education, for everyone. Uh, you, you, both mornings, you got up pretty early. Uh, one, you got up very early just because you went to bed very early the night before. So you're actually up about four o'clock in the morning, something like that. But the the more typical was five o'clock in the morning. There were multiple, multiple cups of coffee to try and get the engine on. You would, um, so five o'clock in the morning would just use this as a case study. You would get up, um, you would read a little bit, you prepare the day, which is two thumbs up. And then maybe at about 6.30 or so, you went to the gym, you did about an hour of exercise, had a quick shower, drove in, commuted. So now you've got up at five, you've had cups of coffee and not much else you've gone and done a 50 or 60 minute run you then have a shower go to the office right into the office walk the floor because manufacturing plants you've got to go and walk the floor etc and uh, and i think it was around 10 a.m that then you were having your first calories and uh, and i'll always forget this it was a, a subway sandwich with no protein a uh, veggie sandwich with a cranberry juice uh, so fatigue inducing for the guys that are listening right into work meetings. And then at lunchtime, and this is one where my eyebrow raised, at lunchtime, you snuck in a swim session that was prescribed for the day before uh, because you were being a good boy. You didn't want to miss that. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, a late lunch, um, very carb heavy, not too much protein. And then um, high, high octane day, uh, I can't remember if there was a, a session at the end of the day, but there, there may have been a short run or walk, but I'm not sure. But then you had a, a dinner that was essentially pretty good, protein, vegetables, et cetera. And then late night dinner, boom, 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 off and, and to bed and uh, eating right before bed. And so so that was the typical pattern. And uh, and we had what it looked like for me is uh, is there were – Several key points. Number one, not hydrated enough. That was uh, one for me. Number two, not consuming enough calories to support your training load. Number three, what you mentioned in introduction, stacking workouts. So at all costs, not not finishing, um, not missing a workout. So even if you had to stack two workouts in a day, despite the busy schedule, you would do it. Not enough protein consumed. It's one of the things we uh, w- wish we did uh, a, a lot of stuff around. So that there were there were several elements, but the first one that that we that I want to ask you about was something not related to calories or training. It was getting organised. It was it was the Sunday special, um, integrating that habit. And so so we went through several several components on this. Talk to me about the Sunday special and uh, and integrating that habit and, and what that has done for you as a, as a very busy time starter. <clears throat> it, it is so important. And I, I, I will say I, when, when I first started, when we first started working together, I read through Purple Patch, the Sunday special and the importance of it. And my initial thoughts were, yeah, I, I do this every day. You know, I plan myself every day. Why, you know, why is this important? I got it. I don't have to worry about this thing. And I, I didn't have it. In in November, I started religiously every Sunday. I, I I go through the Sunday special, and it has had an immeasurable impact on my ability to to integrate sport and in work and life together. And a couple of examples I'd use last year or prior to the Sunday special, and in that that moment of of you responding to the document, uh, <clears throat> I, I probably changed workouts four or five times a week, six times a week, you know, just juggling things. I think this year from January to today, I probably have changed three total workouts. I've changed twice that in a week previously, and now it's I changed three. And, I, and previously I'd, I'd get workouts done by stacking them. I get it done now just in, in the way you've prescribed them, and it's a, just a much better feeling. I'm more fresh. Uh, I'm more organized. There's not the crunch of time that I, I felt previously, so it, it's a great process and very necessary. It, it, it's the, the thing I like about it is the simplicity, and and for listeners that 
don't know what the Sunday special is. It, it's a very simple process where it's a commitment. And, th- and this applies for everyone, not just executives. It, it actually originated from our pros that had a lot of competing demands, you know, sponsors, planning recovery, it sounds silly, planning eating, massage strength, and of course, all of the training that they would do. And just on a Sunday, spending a little bit of time, 20 to 30 minutes, that about, that about not, not much more than that here, Mike. And um, looking ahead, but for you, not just planning work, not just planning family commitments, but planning all three and integrating it and making it decisions up front so that you're moving into Monday in control and in execution mode. And uh, it's such a simple process uh, that, that I never realized, by the way, when we created this, that it would ever have application beyond our pro athletes that we were coaching. We just use it for them because I wanted them to have eyes wide open of this is where I need to show up and train really hard. And here we are, you know, it, it's been a great tool of control for you. And I think that that's a great litmus. It, it, it has been just tremendous for me. I, it's uh, It allows me not just to look at what I'm doing in the coming week, but several weeks into the future. But it's a good reflection tool as well of, what worked and what didn't work in the previous week? What were the great workouts and, and you know what, what were some of the opportunities? It's funny you say that because uh, I, I was just uh, uh, delivering a keynote and one of the elements of, uh, of the discussion I was having with an organizational leadership team was around traits of high performers. And one of the ones that caught them by surprise a little bit was reflection. And I said, elite athletes and high performers really embrace reflection. So it's, it's great that you just brought that up. You are a high performer. And, and I think that's a key element to look back and what was done well that you can obviously continue to integrate. And then what can you build on? That was great. Um, before we go into the energy and, and the calories and, and those components, I, I, I want to come back to your mindset a little bit because you, you mentioned in the introductory section of our chat around chasing fitness and then shifting perspective. So, so we agreed around November time, let's not sign up for any races. Let's just develop a really big platform of health. So c- can you just unpack that mindset shift that occurred with you? Because you, you said before, I was always chasing fitness more, more, more to get to my sporting results. So what was the shift broken down a little bit more for listeners. What was the shift that you took on where you said, I'm going to actually change here. I'm going to evolve how I, how I tackle this challenge, I guess. Yeah. For me, I, I was always about more is better. You know, I, I had to do more, whatever the workouts was were. I had to do more and I never really concentrated on nutrition. I never concentrated on hydration at all. And I, I didn't under, I quite frankly, I didn't understand it. And yeah. through, through your challenge to me, I, I can't tell you how many books I've read even this year in terms of how to how to have better nutrition, not not just for racing, but for health, for longevity, for those types of things. So it, it's been a great process for me. I, f- I feel much better about my knowledge um, as well as the health piece. Um, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm in much better control right now that I, I understand health better than I ever have. And I, I'm in search for more knowledge. I, I, every book I read, I, I think, or almost every book I read is around something for, for better health, better longevity, those types of things. Fantastic. So what, what in your mind have you changed? You, we, we, we know the challenges that you had. I, I read uh, your, um, your Day in the Life of Mike. So through you as the athlete, what have been the biggest changes? We, we've got the first one, Sunday special. I really wanted to dig into that. But but general habits, so that, so that people, because this is simple stuff, yeah. It's not something revolutionary that, that you've really done. It's a pretty simple habit change. So through you as the athlete, what, what have you done? Well, the, the first to get a, to get away from chasing fitness, we're, we're not racing the way we used to. And, and when a bad event occurred, it was jumping to the next race. You know, I've been training what, you know, whatever, when something bad happened, it was, okay, well, we'll just get another race and there's another one in a few weeks. So we'll just hop into that one. And that wasn't, you know, that wasn't successful. You know, even when there was completions, that wasn't successful. But I, I've shifted everything I do around nutrition. So some of it's very direct feedback from you, which was 
the, the catalyst for all of this. But I don't, I don't get up and have four, five, six cups of coffee. The first thing I do is drink water. I mean, it's very simple things like that. But I, you know, I, I count how many ounces of water I, I drink during the day because I know, I know now how important that is. Uh, I've shifted my diet to to protein or to more protein away from from carbohydrates. And I eat, even before I eat tons of salads and vegetables. I love that, but I never had any protein. I absolutely never had any protein, and <clears throat> even on on uh, from a, a training standpoint, I would get through with the training session. I wouldn't eat for three, four, five hours, and the first thing I do now is I search for some place where I can get a, an energy drink, and not an energy drink. I'm sorry, a protein drink, yeah. so that I can start to fuel my body. And I'm much more in tune with how I feel, not just in a workout, but during the middle of the day, I, I, I feel very different than I used to. Um, so it's, it's very positive in my mind. Yeah. What, what's the, what's the, I mean, you've got some quantifiable shifts. So November 21st is our, is our sort of D day of this. So what, what, give me, give me the quantifiable shifts that have occurred. We're recording this right at the end of March. So, you know, give or take like yeah. four months later, um, where you're at with uh, body weight right now? Have you you've lost a little bit of weight, yeah? <laughs> I've I've lost um, since November. I've lost as of Monday. I was down thirty four pounds. Um, thirty four pounds. And yeah, and I I don't even think about losing weight, and it it just happened naturally. So <clears throat> I'm never I'm never hungry. Um, had a physical. Every every metric is is better everything from cholesterol to blood pressure to glucose readings everything was better than it's been in years at, the, at that physical the doctor was they, they were i'll say shocked i was <laughs> in terms of how much better everything was and uh, I, I i spent time talking about our work together and i said that's that's what did it because they said well how did you do this or how much how much are you focused on this? And I said, right now, I'm I'm not really focused. It's it's habit now, and I, I just don't want to change what's going on. It, it's building habits, and I want to I want to double underline this. You you so the and, and and obviously there are the middle of the bell, bell curve. The the quest is not dropping weight, dropping weight, dropping weight. But you're yeah. you you have improved this and uh, and had weight to drop. Like let's just put it out there but you did it by consuming more calories and reducing stress and that that's very challenging for many people to understand hang on isn't dropping weight about really restrictive diets and elimination we did it by addition adding a ton more protein managing sugars and carbohydrates a little bit and consuming more calories so that the quest for me as the coach to, to really sort of make it crystal clear for, for for people, my goal was to try and establish control, consistency, and limit stress. And what I saw is you accidentally, you know, high commitment, high work ethic, really tough, incredibly tough, but really overstressed. And um, and so the the reason that the blood values are really valuable. And the body composition and body weight is really valuable is because it's an outcome of lower stress, healthy platform of eating, not some quest. Like we, we've never talked about body weight. Like that, that's the, we've never talked about, oh, Mike, we need to lose weight. It's about establishing. And, and what I'm interested in then is clearly as the coach, what's happened, you, you, you talked about the training sessions you don't move training your training performance is just incredibly consistent it's it's almost boring to monitor now because everyone is like you know so, so but you felt it yeah like your performance in training is is improved it is um th there were times prior to that november uh date when every, every single week there'd be some good workouts and there'd be some bad ones and there were bad ones every week and you know i felt it in terms of fatigue or i felt it in terms of soreness and it, it's just not there it's almost every workout is is really really positive um i feel consistent i'm not i'm not searching for nutrition at any point of my day and in, in 
that used to be the case. It, it used to be middle of the afternoon. If I had a training session at lunch, even if I had lunch, sometime around three or four o'clock, I was searching for coffee or something, you know, to to get through the next few hours more productively. And I don't. It's just not there anymore. I don't search for it. I don't think about it. It's uh, it's and and a question that I don't. We haven't spoken about too much, so you know, just be honest and transparent here. But what about in work life? You know, cognitive function, energy in the day. I'm I'm assuming that you've felt benefit across that arena as well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's the same in, at work in terms of its benefits as as it is in training. Of <clears throat> it's a consistent work day. I you know I I know when nutrition's coming. I I I do it properly. And during the day, I, I'm not hungry. I don't search. I'm not searching for nutrition during the afternoon to get through the next few hours. It's it's just I've, I've eaten my lunch and I know when dinner's coming and I know that I've done it the right way. And it's just very consistent. I'm, I, I, I can say, honestly, I'm never hungry <laughs> um, it, because <laughs> that's odd. That's an odd thing for me to say. I wouldn't have said that six months ago. Um, but I, I am absolutely never hungry. I, I feel at times that I've eaten too much, but the weight keeps coming off. It's uh, it's it's absolutely incredible. The um, the for me, and and it it gets to the crux of our conversation here. What does it mean? Like, what what is the code that we're trying to crack here? What what's the puzzle we're trying to solve? And um, I asked you in the fall last year, November time, to not have an event on the schedule. And you, you committed to it. And, and I, I, I'll never forget, I said to you, you are, you are not allowed to go and enter Ironman Texas, even though I know that you're looking at Ironman Texas because it was April and, and I know Mike, you know, it's like, let's just go and do Texas. And you, you bravely and uh, sort of listened and did it. So we haven't had any race on the calendar, really. You have got Boston in, in, in a couple of weeks, but I'm assuming that the competitive juices, the the aspirations, they're they're not diminished. No, are, are they? Is the engine starting to fire up for the season? <laughs> I can't wait to get to a triathlon. Yes, Boston's going to be. It's it's a charity run, and I'm going to enjoy the day. This this would be my fifth time there. It's a, it's a wonderful race, so I'm going to enjoy it. But I can't wait to get back to triathlon season and and do it the new way the right way it's um that that's it it's when we had our our sort of weekly call last week and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna sort of start to round it out with something that you said directly to me but i'm gonna first say something that i said to you which said the irony of all of this is that we spent a year training for something and not doing great we made this radical shift did not train for anything. And if you had have entered Ironman Texas, you're more ready to go and excel at Ironman Texas now than you ever <laughs> have been when you've been working yeah. with me. So, and, yeah. and that's together, that's a partnership with Unlock That, where genuinely you are just weeks from performance readiness because you have a platform of health. And that's what success is. That's what, the, for, for me, that's the epitome of what the code is we're trying to crack. Yeah, we're trying to get faster at racing, but if we can first create really robust consistency and uh, and a great platform of physical readiness, you can go do anything, and and that's it. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch you in um, in Boston. Just go and have a great day, a great experience. Celebrate the hundred thousand odd people that are going to be cheering everyone, including you, across uh, across the course, and then um, then we can turn our our, our sort of eyes on triathlon and uh and keep up the code and and keep it crack keep it cracking um but uh but i want to come back to that that quote that you said to me you, you sort of referenced it here but i think it's really compelling that if listeners can take nothing else and this is direct from mike i'm, I'm just going to steal your thunder a little bit which is i shifted my focus from chasing fitness to chasing health and that was the thing that unlocked my fitness. And I was like, yeah. when you said that to me, I was like, that's it. That's what I'm trying to help people do. That That's it. Thank you. So uh, so just said, can I record you? Because that is exactly it. And so um, it 
it's been a journey. Yeah, I'm 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 so proud of you, and I, and I'm I'm so happy to work with you. It's uh, it's one of the most rewarding coaching experiences that I've had, and uh, you know, I've helped these teenage kids go and win world championships. That's great. But unlocking <laughs> your performance readiness in life, you're a, you're a, a great example of what it means to be a purple patch athlete. So so thank you for being a part of the journey. I, I appreciate the opportunity, Matt, and I. I there's no words that can express how thankful I am to, to be where I am today. And yeah, it's just a, it's a great feeling to be on the, the path of health, knowing that fitness is following versus where I was. Thank you for all you do. No, good man. And uh, hey, you remember the best athlete in the family. It's still Bob. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, great job. Well, well, thank you very much for joining. And uh, and uh, folks, uh, I hope that you draw some of the lessons today. If you if you do reflect on your own journey, remember, if reflection is a great characteristic and trait of any high performer. But if you do reflect on your own journey, you're chasing health. Do you really drive in and build that platform of health, or are you? almost fear-driven, trying to make sure that you're ready for the demands of the race. I think if you chase that platform of physical health first, it unlocks your readiness for whatever you're trying to do in life. And that's the key thing. So Mike Kane, best of luck for the season. We're going to track your results. You're going to shine. Your website worthy, but thank you for being a part of Purple Patch and thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for the opportunity. Take care. Guys, thanks so much for joining and thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed the new format. You can never miss an episode by simply subscribing. Head to the Purple Patch channel of YouTube and you will find it there and you could subscribe. Of course, I'd like to ask you if you will subscribe. Also, share it with your friends and it's really helpful if you leave a nice positive review in the comments. Now, any questions that you have, let me know, feel free to add a comment and I will try my best to respond and support you on your performance journey. And in fact, as we commence this video podcast experience, if you have any feedback at all, as mentioned earlier in the show, we would love your help in helping us to improve. Simply email us at info at purplepatchfitness.com or leave it in the comments of the show at the Purple Patch page and we will get you dialed in. We'd love constructive feedback. We are in a growth mindset, as we like to call it. And so feel free to share with your friends. But as I said, let's build this together. Let's make it something special. It's really fun. We're really trying hard to make it a special experience. And we want to welcome you into the Purple Patch community. With that, I hope you have a great week. Stay healthy. Have fun. Keep smiling, doing whatever you do. Take care.